Well guys, in this video you'll see, uh, well apparently you're going to see deer running in the background. Um, this video is going to be about uh, this wood chipper. This is an old Asplund model JEY. Uh, I think this was made like, oh I don't know, it's been a few months since I've done the research. I think it was like 1973 or 74 this one was produced. Uh, Altec no longer supports this unit. Altec bought uh, Asplund's chipper line, I guess, back in the 90s. Um, so anyhow, um, I had a hard time finding uh, some of the parts that I was looking for, and I lost the video clips that I had made early on working on this thing. So this is going to be just a little bit busted up, a little bit screwed up. Uh, I don't think you're going to be missing uh, really anything uh, super important. Basically how this project started out, I brought this chipper home, it was not running. And uh, the uh, this fan shroud here was completely loose and was had fallen down and was riding on the, uh, the main shaft of the chipper here. So when I brought this thing home from the old boy that I bought it off of, all these bolts were broken off back here and that shroud was riding on that shaft. So that was the very first thing that I did when I got it home was to remove this shroud. The uh, fan blade was destroyed inside there. I replaced it, uh, but, but I removed the shroud, removed the old fan blade. There is a big, thick, flywheel on here. I think the book says it weighs 450 pounds, something like that. I had to fight to get that flywheel off. Uh, I used my tractor with the uh, front end loader to help lift the thing off once I got it broke loose off of a tapered hub behind there. And uh, then I think the video is going to pick up from there. Well, now that we got that flywheel off, you can get a look at, uh, I guess that's called a taper lock hub. That'd be, that's what I would call it anyhow. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can tell that, you know, that hub has a taper to it. Um, you can see where the little uh, impressions from where them bolts were uh, pushing against the backside of the hub to pop the flywheel off. Uh, we can see now that this plate, this was this is the uh, object of this whole exercise, is to get that plate off because it's supposed to have six bolts holding it on. It has no bolts holding it on. So we can take this off and see that those bolts are broken off in this housing. So I'm going to try my best to get those broken bolts out of this housing and uh, get it bolted on with new bolts. We can also see now that this flange has got a giant chunk missing out of it. Uh, it doesn't, I guess it, you know, as long as it doesn't affect how the thing works, I'm, I guess I'm okay with that. So I think the first thing I'm gonna try to do, I don't know, maybe, maybe drill an easy out. I uh, probably ought to go ahead and start soaking them down with WD-40. So I'm gonna fight that and I'll get back with you guys. Well, I didn't get very far into it. I broke my easy out in the very first bolt. So, this is gonna be a fight too. Well, we're out here on the chipper again today and uh, I was having a terrible time trying to get those broken bolts out of that flange. Um, and actually when I held that plate, you know, that, that plate that bolts up to it, when I held it up to it and I lined up the six mounting holes, it was shifted like an eighth of a turn. I wonder if when uh, whoever broke that, you know, broke that big chunk off of that, that flange, I wonder if they rotated that to hide that break down at the bottom. Because this plate is supposed to have that flat spot on it against the, the back here. And when I, when I lined up the holes, it was, it was way out of whack. So because I couldn't get the, uh, I could not get those broken bolts out. I tried heat and punches and chisels and easy outs. And uh, because I couldn't get them out and they weren't gonna be, you know, the right rotation anyhow, um, I went ahead and just drilled and tapped new holes around this thing. So, uh, you know, I had to drill different holes in, in that plate too. But um, the, uh, between that plate and that flange though, they're supposed to be spacers, about an inch thick, something like that. There were two of them 
that were on the, there were only two broken bolts that were kind of dangling back there. So I saved the spacers off of them. And uh, I don't have anything just exactly like that, but I'll tell you what worked out just the, just the same height as these. And it's height must not be critical because these, these two spacers are about an eighth inch difference. That's just a bit shorter than that one. Um, but the longer one is exactly the same height as three half inch nuts stacked up together. So rather than leave them loose, I went ahead and tack welded them and I'm gonna use those for spacers behind that plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that thing mounted up well, here we are uh, next day again. We're finally getting a break from the snow. It's uh, like mid-30s. It's a little windy, but the sun's out, so it's not bad out here. You can see I got the flywheel on. Um, I got my, uh, I got this plate bolted on. Now it's good and sturdy. So I got six bolts holding that on now versus zero before. I put, uh, I put just gobs of anti-seas on that, uh, that tapered hub. I don't know if that'll bite me in the butt or not. I don't know if you're supposed to put anti seize on, uh, you know, a taper hub like that or not, but I did. So, um, cause every time I think, eh, I'll put it on one more time and the next guy will have to deal with it. Well, then I end up being the next guy. So hopefully that'll help me when I have to take that back apart again. Uh, I also removed the tank. This is a homemade tank. This is not a factory tank. I'm sure. Uh, looks like it's made out of stainless. It's, it's clean as a whistle inside. It had some dirt and uh, some sticks and stuff just that it had fallen in there. Somebody made a homemade cap and they drilled a hole in the top. So um, it actually was, it was just sitting in there. It had bolts on, uh, you know, holding it in, but there were no nuts on the bottom. So I removed that yesterday, dumped out all the old stuff, um, cleaned out the tank. Again, no rust or anything in there. So clean as a whistle. I'm just leaving this uh, plastic container over top because you know, the, the vent that the guy made is just open to uh, rain and stuff. So I dumped a couple of gallons of gas in it just now. Um, but yesterday when I was cleaning that up, I blew out the lines. I took my air compressor. I blew out that line. I took that fitting off, uh, double check, make sure there's no clogs or anything. Uh, Teflon taped on that. Um, Followed that, this is a copper line that's been painted. Followed it around, it runs up there to the uh, fuel pump. The, uh, I took the uh, filter off the bottom of the fuel pump there. You can see there's a canister filter on the bottom of the fuel pump itself. Took that apart, that filter looked really clean, so I put it back together, uh, blew out that line, put a new piece of rubber hose. So I can bring you guys in here. Put a new piece of rubber hose on this section. Then the out, the uh, fuel pump out line is this here. Uh, this filter looks good. It doesn't look like it's got a bunch of crap in it or anything. And the line is actually in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna reuse this. Uh, I'm just following the uh, fuel system on up and we get to the carburetor. I just popped the, uh, just popped the cap off of it a minute ago. And you can see that the uh, hose is broke in there so I'll need a new hose which leads out to the uh, filter housing out there but when I pop that cap off I look down in there in the uh, carburetor and there's a mud dauber clod in there clod of mud so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean that up a little bit uh, try to get the dirt and crap out of there as much as I can and uh, then we'll see if we can't maybe dump a little uh, dump a little fuel in the carburetor and uh, see if we can get her to fire off Maybe my battery's dead. Well, it wasn't uh, wasn't my battery being dead. It was a terrible ground on this uh, negative post. So you can see where that. Well, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. It was about three quarters of the way rotted through. And I pulled the battery off the charger, brought it out here, and it was still just clicking. Like, I know that can't be right. 
and uh, wiggle that thing around and it just broke right off so i'm gonna go ahead and clean these up this was a really poor connection to begin with so i'm gonna cut that back strip it back uh clean that connection up i'm gonna use again one of these cheap little universal terminals um but i'm gonna make a little better connection than that i'm gonna have a big fire going out here real soon i just got a bad feeling well that'll, <laughs> that was not gonna help fuel up into the filter that's a good sign that backfire makes me a little nervous though so should I investigate it or should I just keep cranking until I kill the battery pack I'll just keep cranking on until I kill the battery pack because it's just about dead Exciting. ourselves a fuel delivery issue.
Well, I'm back on the wood chipper again today, and uh, I'm focusing my attention on the electrical today. Um, I pulled the alternator off, and it, it's not charging. I went ahead and ordered one. I ordered a uh, GM one wire with an internal voltage regulator, so that I can pass that rat's nest. It's uh, it's just a mess. Um, the wiring on this thing is atrocious, so. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna gut the wiring off this engine and redo it. Um, and I'm gonna simplify it hopefully without having an inter internal voltage regulator. Um, the coil is working, so it's for uh, external resistor. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a resistor. Uh, the manual calls for a 1.3 to 1.4 ohm. I think Napa's got one, uh, ECH ICR11, I think part number is uh, 1.35 ohm. So I need to get to Napa and pick one of them up. And uh, once I get those two components on here, um, the rest of it shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, the uh, uh, solenoid appears to be working, so I'm going to try to use that one. Uh, the buttons are working, you know, or the push button works. The uh, uh, on off is just a simple toggle switch, you should be able to reuse that. Um, some of this stuff, like the uh, uh, temperature, uh, I've got new gauges in there, I need to get plumbed in. I'm going to go ahead and do the wiring first, but I'm going to tear out this temperature gauge, I think, just to get it out of the way. I got a new oil pressure gauge, and uh, I think I got a voltage gauge too. So anyhow, I'm going to get busy on this thing, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I get done. Hopefully, I'm going to simplify things a lot. Well, I finally found the time to tear into this carburetor. Uh, my kit just came in a couple of days ago, went and picked that up at the parts store, so I'm going to get this thing rebuilt, get it back on there, and uh, the alternator came in, so uh, that just showed up yesterday. I need to get, it, get that installed, and I've got a pile out here. Um, I started a few days ago cutting down the trees. Uh, my nephews came over and helped me. We cut down quite a few trees there, and uh, we got rid of uh, everything but the brush, so I need to get this thing going so I can use it. All right, well, um, nephew came over again today. We've been working on this thing for, I don't know, a few more hours. And I think we've got it as good as it's gonna get. Um, we were able to, uh, we bolted the hood back on. Uh, we messed with this thing last night. We got it running. It was running, it's running a lot better than it had, um, you know, since we rebuilt the carburetor and put all new, all new wiring on it. So everything's good, and, you know, all the connections are good and tight. We put cleaned up all the connections, dielectric grease on everything. All our crimp fittings have dielectric grease in them with shrink tubing on them. So the connections, all the wiring on it is as good as it can be. Um, we got our gauges on here. The water never did really get hot, so I don't know if there's not a, uh, um, I don't think the gauge is bad because I was laying my hand on top of the radiator and the, and the upper cooling hose. I don't think maybe there's, maybe there's not a, uh, oh, a, uh, thermostat in the uh, in the thing so we only ran it for well i don't know we ran it for 20 minutes or so but it never got hot it never registered on the gauge even which yeah maybe that's a good thing um all the other gauges appeared to work fine uh oil pressure if i'm remembering right oil pressure was a tick high it, it was showing a little over 40 i think so um that that gauge you know these are a cheap this was a three gauge thing off of amazon or ebay they was about the cheapest i could find um the uh, voltage is reading good. Actually, you can see, uh, get my, uh, there's, everything comes alive, um, or the tack comes alive anyhow. We got a light on the tack. That was a cheap little tack. Um, it comes with tinted glass and you need light, it needs a light for you to see it during the daytime or night. So anyhow, that's just the way it is. We wired it up to where it lights up all the time. Um, but uh, we've got a battery box on there now, an all-weather battery box. Got a deep cycle uh, trolling motor battery in there. It's just what I had handy. We redid the mount up here a little bit. We put in a new pin. Um, this vertical rod was bent. We had to hook up the tractor to that and bend it back. So that should be good. Uh, we greased up the uh, clutch handle. We've got all our guards on now. And uh, after messing with that thing a little bit last night, that shaft appears to be bent. The main shaft in the chipper must have a little bend to it 
because when it's uh, when it's running, you can see that pulley is running just a little bit out of true, and I think that's causing these belts to really start jumping around and stuff. So it was got kind of violent at higher RPM. So I wanted to make sure we get the guards back on before we even test it again. Um, the chute had to re-weld that. This was broken off up here. Uh, re-welded that. The bottom side of the chute was broken off. Spent a good bit of time re-welding all that to get that back to where it's functional again. Um, there were all kind of little pieces, little cracks uh, on the, all, just all over on the machine. Went around here with a welder and just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Um, another little weld there, another little weld up here. This whole flange was, was broken off. We got our uh, uh, fan shroud on. It's hard to do, but I can reach back there and turn the flywheel just a little bit by hand. And it doesn't, it doesn't sound like the fan is dragging on the shroud, so I'm pretty happy with that. We used a piece of six inch um, corrugated culvert pipe. That was a pain in the butt to get that wrangled on. That's on, it's on okay up there. Um, but that, that six inch line, that six inch tubing or hose is ridiculously expensive if you can find it. And this being a square down here, it just, we're going with six inch uh, corrugated pipe there and it's gonna hopefully be sufficient. Um, the only thing left to do now is fire it up and see what happens here. Uh, we checked all the fluids. It does have an oil leak. In running it yesterday, we noticed that uh, there's an oil leak coming out of the intake valley, I think is where that's coming from. And uh, that kind of coincides with all the grunginess on the front of the engine. So I'm sure that oil leak's been there for a long time. Um, I think I showed you the, the new alternator I put on there. That's a GM one wire alternator. Uh, but actually GM one wire is what was on there. So uh, it went in, it ain't the prettiest thing. Um, I had to change the, uh, the, the uh, fan on the front of the alternator. The new one was, uh, the fan blades were just about a quarter inch, maybe an eighth to a quarter inch longer than that one. And I ended up taking the old fan, or you know, the fan off the old alternator and putting on that one. Uh, again, it doesn't run great, but it's running okay. It's running better than it did when I, when I first bought it. Uh, we got oil in our, this is an oil bath air filter here. This is three inch, uh, uh, corrugated uh, field tile that goes to the uh, top of the carburetor. Let's see if I can get this thing to start. I haven't started it yet today, but uh, we'll give it a try. got that miss in it and I messed around with the distributor last night loosened up the distributor I don't have a timing light and I'm not sure even where this thing should be set on timing so I don't know that it would really help a whole lot but I twisted that distributor you know wiggled it back and forth it seemed like it got worse on either side so I just pretty well leaving it where it was um, I don't you know given the the age of this thing and the unknown engine condition um, it's got quite a bit of blow by coming out of the uh, breathers on the valve cover so who knows what's going on with them cylinders um it's running hopefully it'll be good enough
made really good looking chips, a lot smaller than I expected them, and it ate everything I fed it. Um, I will say the only downside to it, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera or not, but I'm telling you guys, that thing beat the tar out of me. I got, I got bruises all over my body and slap marks all over me. Um, this arm took this this right arm took the worst of the beating, but when it's jerking that stuff in there, it it'll slap the tar out of you. Which I knew going in, I knew that's how they are, you know, um, just from talking to other guys about that kind of chipper. Uh, but anyhow, I went down my list. I uh, pulled out all my old receipts, and uh, I'll just break this down real quick here for you guys. Um, I put on a uh, coil resistor for twelve bucks. Uh, bought a bunch of wire connectors and some miscellaneous wire. Uh, Thirty-four carb kit was thirty-three. Distributor cap was fourteen. Points was twenty-one. Plug wires was twenty-nine. Rotor was 10, condenser was 10, plugs was 21. Uh, put that blower fan on, I bought that used off a guy for 60. Alternator was 63. I added a tachometer, which it didn't have before. Uh, that was 18. Oil, volt, and water was a triple, uh, triple gauge cluster that I bought off of Amazon for 39. Uh, fuel line and filter for eight at uh, three inch hose that I used for the air intake was four bucks and I probably figured a little on the low end here for miscellaneous hardware I put pounds of nuts and bolts on that thing uh, and a lot of grade 8 stuff but I figured at 12 bucks it was probably closer to 20 anyhow um, total miscellaneous was all those things add up to three hundred and eighty eight dollars um, of course there's really no way to figure in, you know, welding, wiring, gas, and all those little miscellaneous things, you know, gas to go buy the parts. Um, I worked on this thing for, I want to say about three months. We started, I think I started early December, and uh, it's now middle of March. Uh, there was a period of time where it was just so cold, I couldn't get motivated to come out here and work on it. Uh, so there's no accounting for time and all that stuff. You know, a lot of time, but, uh, Anyhow, I hope that helped you guys. Um, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button. I'm working on some other stuff already. I'm making videos for. Um, Dad just broke ground on his new pond project. He's gonna be putting in about, I think it's gonna come out to about an acre or so. Uh, new pond, the excavator was just out yesterday. Uh, same excavator is gonna be flattening off, uh, leveling out a spot for our new barn, which is coming in a, in a couple of months. And I'm still doing work on that pond. If you, uh, you subscribers, you may have seen me clearing off the backside of the dam. I'm doing other stuff on that pond. So click the subscribe button. You get to see all the videos as I make them. And until the next video, guys, keep on tankering.